gradually the dawn came up. In Beijing, you know how misty it is, smoggy. This wasn't a sunrise. This was like a grayness gradually acquiring some sort of light. And where all this life had been was this quadrangle of tanks facing out. All the students were gone. And I just stood there and I watched. T.D. Ullman was staying at this Beijing hotel which has a commanding view of Shangan Avenue, the Avenue of Eternal Peace, that runs directly into Tiananmen Square. On these balconies, Western reporters and photographers had crouched, often under gunfire, to record the events of the night of June 3rd, 4th. Then, at noon on the 5th, when the army seemed in complete control, something remarkable happened on Shangan Avenue, immediately below. The tanks danced. It was obscene. It was like an obscene dance. They just didn't roll out. They swiveled around. God knows why they did that. And then the moment came which has intrigued you and fascinated and moved the world. You stand there. You're looking down. This tank's coming out. It's got its uh, gun up. And this man just went out and he said, stop. It's absolutely extraordinary. You could look at him as unusually brave, but he probably wasn't. He was probably just an ordinary person who was so disgusted at what he had seen for the last few days. And he said, right, that's it. I'm going out and I'm going to just stand in front of that column. The tank did not try to just run him over. It turned to go around him. And then the young man jumps in front of the tank. And then the tank turns the other way and the young man jumps the other side. They did this a couple of times. The tank did not try to just run him over. It turned to go around him. And then the young man jumps in front of the tank. And then the tank turns the other way and the young man jumps the other side. They did this a couple of times and then the tank turned off its motor. And then it seemed to me that all the tanks turned off their motors because uh, it was really quiet. Standing in front of a column of tanks no one around him. He was all on his own with his shopping bag in his hand. He climbed on top of the tank, banged on the lid, said, get out of my city. You're not wanted here. We don't know exactly what he said, but it's clear that's what he wanted to say. And I started to cry because I had seen so much shooting and so many people dying that I was sure this man would get crushed. So I remember thinking, I can't cry because I can't see. I want to watch this. During this time, I'm thinking, this guy is going to be killed any moment now. And if he is, I just can't miss this. This is something that he's giving his life for. It's my responsibility to record it as accurately as possible. And then after a while, the young man jumps down, and the tank turns on the motor, and the young man blocks him again. I thought, he's just going to get crushed. I realized that the, the Public Security Bureau had been watching us from the other rooftop by binoculars. <laughs> 